wasn't big enough, so I did that. Um, let's talk about it, I guess. Hi. So I made the Rook um, this time last year, so about a year ago. And it's a great printer, and I love both of my Rooks. Um, but I needed something bigger. Um, so I did this. So this is a fully scalable version of the Rook. It has some parts that the Rook doesn't have. Um, as you know, the normal Rook has a cantilevered bed. Because of the size, this didn't need that. So it has a triple Z geared belted system. Um, so there's a, both a 20 tooth and a 12 tooth version. Uh, to change your gearing. So the 12 tooth is for the heavier, bigger beds. This is sized for a 300 by 300 by 400 bed. Uh, the actual size that I can put in my frame is 350 by 350 by 400. Uh, main reason I got my extrusions cheaper if I didn't cut them. So why should you build this? I don't know. Um, Main reason would be that you have a specific bed you want to use. Uh, for me, I had a 300 by 300 bed and I wanted to use it in a design. So I started making my own design and figured the Rook works great. So why not just make it scalable? And while I designed the Rook, I also did think that this could be easily scalable to any size. So this is not a Voron. It's not a rat rig. It's not something fancy. It's the bare minimum that you need to get started with a big Core XY printer. So that's why there is no official tool head. It uses the same tool heads as the Rook. There's no specific parts um, place for your electronics. Uh, you can figure that out yourself. Uh, personally, I have everything in a backpack right now. Works. I'll be doing a different project to remove the backpack at a later date. I'm running CPAP. You can do that. The, just the size of this and the modularity of the frame makes it a great start for your uh, DIY projects. If you want to build something from scratch, you want to learn how to design stuff, this is a great first place to start uh, to design anything you need to add to this frame. So you can design your own uh, tool head. You can design your own holder for your spool. Uh, it doesn't have to be difficult. It's all 2020s, nothing fancy. So I've set up mine to be a small, a big scale printer. I have all the other printers that can do small detailed stuff. This is set up to be big. So it's using a 0.6 or a 0.8 nozzle uh, that I can quickly change. And it's set up to, to be a high flow, but slow printer because I'm over extruding when I'm doing vases or if I'm doing bigger projects, I don't have to care about layer time as much. So as you can see, I did my big um, trash can, it took about two hours. I also did this, which is an inlay for a card game, printed in Petchy. Perfect, except uh, this is a super cold room. So a little bit of a bow, it doesn't matter. Print quality and functionality is the main thing here and it turned out great. So I think the missus will be happy. So even with a big nozzle, you can do um, decorative prints, this would probably be looked at something like artsy because the layer lines are big, but um, the advantages of having a machine like this, that you can quickly swap nozzles and do tiny things. You can have big nozzles and do big things. You can even have small nozzles and do bigger things like this one, uh, which is a super fun little print. And it can do practical stuff. So, a phone holder. Um, this, as it is, mainly a PLA and PETG machine. If you build an enclosure around this, 
which I have done, you can easily pr print ABS and ASA, which I also done. It's great for vases, big vases, because of the big the 400 volume that I have on my z-axis. As you can see, you can print big. And if you want, you can scale it even bigger. You can also small scale it smaller. If you want something to do um, just factory printing, you want something big in XY, but not as tall in Z, this is a great platform for you to start with. So what do you need to build something like this? Well, you need a frame. And for that, I've made a calculation tool uh, that you can find on printables or in my GitHub. Uh, that'll tell you exactly what size frame you need to get according to your desired volume. So you can input whatever print volume you want and the calculator will give you an exact uh, frame of reference for what you need as far as it comes to your frame and your rails. So the, the Z is pretty simple. It's five identical extrusions and then three rails that are the same length. Nothing fancy, easy. Y is also the same as your extrusion. And for this, I'm using uh, MGM 12, not MGM 9 as the normal work would. For X, it's also the same length as your extrusion. So it's a fairly simple frame to put together. It's a big cube with the X axes, and then there's four extrusions on your bed. These are also scaled to size. All that is also covered in that calculator. Next, we have electronics. So for this, I'm actually using two printer boards that I had uh, from other projects. So I'm using an SKR 1.4 and an original Ender 3 um, 4.2.2 board um, put together with a Big Tree Tech Pi. This performs great. Um, the Creality board doesn't support sensorless homing, which you need for X and Y. So it's only powering the three motors for the Z. So this um, setup can be used can be built by just spare parts if you have a couple of uh, extra boards. If not, I would get, recommend getting something like an MKS Monster, nice and cheap. You need separate drivers and a Pi. Or you can get something like a Manta M8P. Uh, there's a couple of different boards like the octopus and stuff. For this, you need five motors and an extruder. So depending on your tool head setup, uh, Bowden, direct drive, whatever extrusion extruder you're using, um, that's a separate part. For the actual motion system, you need five. So you need X and Y. Uh, depending on the size, these can be small, they can be big. Uh, Personally, I'm using 48 millimeter motors and they're just fine. Uh, I print 25 minute benches that are perfect. They do not get hot. For your Z axes, I'm using uh, 34 millimeters, uh, which are the cheapest that I can find locally. I didn't want to order from AliExpress because of shipping. So for my 34s are maybe on the smaller side for this size of a printer. So anything uh, from 250, down to 180, uh, your 34 and even smaller should be more than fine. Looking from this angle, you can see the simple belt path. It's still a rook belt path. Simplest core XY there is. Um, I've added tensioners for your Z axes on top. So there's a knob on each of them. The X uh, axis has been changed to have an extrusion. This just gives you more options for your rails and it also increases stability. When it comes to tool head, you're not limited to the uh, Rook tool heads, uh, but they do fit on here straight away. There's no adapting. If you need any custom tool heads made and you're building a scalable, let me know and I'll help you out uh, find something that works or even design something for you. So when I designed this, this 
frame was designed to be for a 350 by 350 build plate. So this is a 300 by 300. So it means that I have a lot of extra room. Even with the 350 build plate, you would still have a lot of extra room. So you have a lot of extra room on both sides of your, your print bed and the rear and the front. So right now I have my, my bed offset to the front. So it's not center in the frame, um, mainly because I want to have my wipe back here. I also have my, my um, setup for my nozzles. I also want to get a, something to auto Z, uh, to do auto Z offset, which I'm working on. And I might even do PCB clicky at some point. And because of the extra room here, I have a lot of space to, to play around with to do other things. This might turn into a tool changer at some point if my plans or my, my wishes come through, basically. This is the quite simplified um, bed holder. There's a rail on the inside here, bolted to this printed part that's bolted to this uh, extrusion. There's not a fancy uh, mount or anything. Uh, the plastic in itself bends a little bit. So this is ABS, which gives me enough flexibility to do triple Z uh, gantry leveling or Z tilt. And because it's kind of permanently mounted, it doesn't really uh, go out of tilt that much. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or ask me over on Rolohan's Discord, uh, where the Rook is and I'll try to answer him as good as I can yeah so until next time um, I'm gonna leave <laughs>